to the common law. My name is attorney Edward Berkman. I'm an attorney practicing in real estate and estate planning. I am a Newburyport resident. I grew up in Ipswich and I studied law at the Andover uh, campus of the Massachusetts School of Law. I wanted to start a program to go over common legal issues and current events and give the public just a better understanding of exactly why you need a lawyer in certain instances when you probably don't need a lawyer um, and just various current law topics that pop up in current events give people a basic understanding of what's going on now I focus on state planning state administration and real estate that's where my background is uh, however on this program we're going to talk about a wide variety of legal issues not just um, those areas and I would also first and foremost would like to point out is that I, although I am an attorney, I am not your attorney. If there is a, a question you have that's a legal question, definitely reach out to your attorney. Ask them if you feel as if a topic we are talking about today or in any other program relates to your specific legal que question or concern or need. It probably doesn't. Every situation is unique. Every situation will probably require its own attorney to do their own research and their own fact-finding to determine what is best for you. So please do not take my, any advice I give on the show as your legal advice or think of me as your attorney. If you'd like additional questions or concerns or comments on how we're doing here on the common law or anything that you just want to ask me legally, you can email me. Um, my email address is eberkman at dtattorneys.com. It will be on the bottom of the screen here. Definitely feel free to reach out to me. Now, normally on the show, we are going to have guests, and we're going to basically interview them, talk about various legal issues as, as we've discussed. Today, we don't have a guest. It's just me. So we're going to talk about a uh, legal issue uh, near and dear to my heart, and I know you're all baiting in anticipation for what that is, and that's going to be the topic of title insurance. So first of all, what is title insurance? Title insurance is a policy you would purchase normally when you purchase a home that would protect your property. So we're talking about the actual lien and the deed and the title. That deed from any issues in prior conveyancing before you purchase the property. In Massachusetts, we have something what's known as a quick claim deed. So essentially, you are quitting your claim to the property when you sell it, which means whoever bought your property now has bought the title and the history of that title they own it all the previous owner does not have any obligations or rights to the property anymore they're absolutely free and clear of all the previous problems even problems that they didn't even know about and they didn't disclose to you in massachusetts we have a lot of old property we're one of the oldest states in the country and thus some of these deeds date back hundreds of years. That alone is why it's important to have title insurance. It's just the length of time in which these deeds and properties are been, been titled. So, some are over 100 years old. It's very important to have title insurance for that reason alone. The other issue with title insurance is you never want to deal with an issue like, with this. If there was a problem in a conveyancing, for example, as a hypothetical, Somebody, uh, you buy a house uh, from somebody's estate, so it's basically someone had died, and you are buying it from their personal representative, which has been appointed by the court. If there is a problem with the probate after you've purchased it, and there's another relative or somebody like that who is insisting on ha having a claim to that property, your ownership interest might be at stake. Uh, which is important to have title insurance. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that this is something normally purchased at the time you buy the house. Um, in Massachusetts, if you have a mortgage on the house, you probably already have title insurance anyway. It's required uh, to secure at least the value of your mortgage loan. You have the option of purchasing an additional policy. That's what we call an owner's policy. Now, 
the trick is, do you have an owner's policy? Do you have just what we would call lender's policy covering that loan amount? This is where it gets tricky, and this is normally where a real estate attorney would just explain to you when you're going through the home buying process, when you're closing on your house. So part of the reason why title insurance is important and why everybody who owns a home should have an owner's policy is, again, we're protecting the title to the home. And that's, again, the history of your home, your history of your home's title. So a common question we get is, well, what kind of things could go wrong with my title? Uh, the most common example is likely from the person who sold you the property didn't have actual rights to sell you the property. Now, is that malicious? Sometimes not, not very often. Most of the time what happens is you're buying the property uh, from somebody who has a flawed title already. So there, the, the issue was before even the person who sold you the house. Uh, and you don't even know about the, the problem. Doesn't, no one knows about it, basically. And somebody will pass away, and the person will go through their estate and find out everything that they own. What do they own? Do they own property? Where do they own property from? And sometimes they'll find that a person owns property uh, to a house that they don't own. It's already been sold. And the person who sold it to them didn't have the right to sell them the house. They thought they did, but they didn't. So in that instance, you would have a claim against your title. Now, that person would likely sue you, saying that you don't actually own the property and that they actually do. Uh, the great thing about title insurance is that they're going to pay for the legal fees to fight that lawsuit, and they will likely pay the settlement to make this go away. So essentially, they would be paying off the person who is claiming to have a hold an ownership interest in property which you already own. It just sort of settles any issues that would happen that just anybody who says that they don't that you don't own the property and it's really them, title insurance says no. You own the property, you own it. You. The other person doesn't own it. They if they had a right to it before, perhaps they're entitled to some money, and again, that's what title insurance is for. That's what insurance is for. To pay money and sort of fix the problem with with money. Hi, this is attorney Ed Berkman, and you're listening to WJOP, LP, Newburyport, Joppa Radio, 96.3 FM. Now, we were, in my previous segment, we were talking about title insurance and basically what it is. Now, the biggest question we have is, how do you know if you have an owner's policy or a lender's policy? The best way of figuring that out is looking at what is known as your closing disclosure. And this is something given to you when you close on the house. It's going to have everything that you're buying and all your closing costs when you're going through this home buying process. It'll list all the expenses that you're paying, all the real estate taxes, the recording fees for the deed, and then it'll say it'll list it all in a little Excel, not Excel, but some sort of a spreadsheet, and it'll say title insurance. It'll either say lent, it'll say lenders, underneath there it should say title insurance, it should say owner's policy. Now, there are a couple myths when it comes to title insurance. We're, today we're going to break down the top five most common myths I've come across in my legal career as it pertains to title insurance. The first one is, I can't afford another monthly bill. The title insurance sounds great. I understand why I need it. My monthly bills are way too high. I'm just scraping by as it is. We all know the status of the economy right now. I'm not going to be on here trying to tell you you need to buy something else. That's not what this is about. Title insurance is something you pay once. Like we st talked about numerous times already, you normally buy it when you purchase the house. It's a one-time payment. 
That's it. Now, the great thing about an owner's policy is your insurance, your coverage, even though you've already paid for it at, at the rate of which you did when you bought the house, that rate is determined based the, off the value of that house when you bought it. That And again, that owner's policy is protecting your equity in the house. That coverage goes up as your equity increases in the property. So as you pay down your loan and as your house goes up in value, so does the value of your title insurance policy. And that is at no additional cost to you, the homeowner. None whatsoever. Again, it's not an additional bill. You've probably already paid for it. And you don't need to be further investing additional funds every month to increase your owner's policy. That happens automatically. Uh, common myth number four is I have my house in a trust already, so it's already protected, so I'm protected. That's great. A lot of people put their homes in trusts. Uh, at the law firm I work for, the law offices of DeRosiers and Tierney, we put homes into trusts every single day. It's very common. It's a great way to protect your home. What that does not do, though, is it will not protect your home's title. That is why you need title insurance. You can protect your home from, you know, putting it into a trust. You can protect it from probate. You can protect it, from, you know, depending on the type of trust you have. You can protect it from some med Medicare expenses, Medicaid expenses, things like that. Uh, however, putting a house into a trust will not protect you, the title of your home from any sort of title issues. Moving on, we have common myth number three, and that is that I already have a homestead filed on the home, so my home is protected. So this should open up a bigger issue of what is a homestead. A homestead is a document you would file with the Registry of Deeds, and this is a document that's going to protect the equity you have in your home. Um, if you're under the age of 62 when you file with the Registry of Deeds, uh, you are protecting $500,000 of your home's equity. Against And this is the key thing. We're protecting from any unsecured creditor. Your mortgage is a secured creditor. The loan for your home is secured by the mortgage. Uh, credit card debt. That's not secured. That is not a secured transaction. So if somebody, I like to say, if somebody stole your identity and, you know, racked up all this credit card debt and you needed to then you know, the credit card company wants to put a lien on your house. You have a homestead filed, you know, they're not going to be able to force a sale of the house. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you can go, you know, open up a Visa card, go on a shopping spree, and then think you don't have to pay it if you have a homestead. It's not the case. It doesn't absolve you of any debts. It just protects that initial equity amount of $500,000 in your home, and so no one can force a sale of your home, unless your equity share of that property is greater than 500000 And in that case, you would still, although the house has been sold, you would still be able to keep some of that money up to that $500,000 amount. Uh, furthermore, homesteads, Massachusetts is a great state for homestead. They have an automatic homestead protection of up to 125000 So even just for buying the house without even filing any other additional paperwork, your house is already protected for up to 125000 uh, additionally, if you are a married couple and you're over the age of 62, you can both file your own homesteads and those stack onto each other. And that doubles your protection, maxing out at $1 million of equity protection for your house if you have a homestead. So how does homestead relate to title insurance? Short answer, it really doesn't. Homestead's not going to protect, again, the title of the home. We're talking about the home's history your deed, your title, dating way back 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 100 years. It's dating back. A homestead's great. Everybody should have one. It's not going to protect the title of your home. It's not going to do it. The second most common myth in regards to title insurance is, well, I already have it. I have the lender's policy as it's required by law. That's great. Everybody has one. If you own a house, if you want a mortgage, you have title insurance. 
However, that title insurance is only covering the loan amount for your house. As you pay off that house, as your mortgage bill goes down, not the monthly bill, but your total amount borrowed, that number goes down. The bank is, you know, their investment in your house is going down. Your title insurance policy goes down again. A lender's policy is only protecting the lender. It's not protecting the homeowner. That's This is why you need to check your closing disclosure, as we talked about before, and double check to see if you have a owner's policy. It's very important. And that leaves us to the most common myth when it comes to title insurance that I've experienced in my career when I speak to clients about it, and that is I already have a homeowner's insurance policy, and so I'm protecting my house that way with my just my general homeowner's insurance policy. Or some people will say that they have an umbrella policy um, that's covering some liability and things like that, other, other things, covering the whole house for all that stuff. All that stuff's important. You Again, you need to have homeowner's insurance for your home. But that, again, as I'm trying to hammer home here, that does not protect the title to the home. It does not protect the home's title. It does not absolve you from any issues that happened at the house before you owned it. This is why you need to have a title insurance policy. Now, not a myth, but sometimes people will come to me and they'll say, what is this thing called home title lock? It's an advertisement you might have heard on the radio or something like that. Businesses um, that advertise that they can protect your home's title. Those are what's known. Those, that's not title insurance. That's like some sort of a watchdog company that's going to watch the deed on your house uh, and you know let you know if somebody tries to sell it out from under you. It's very rare, you know. In order to do that, you'd have to falsify a deed and record it with the registry of deeds. Um, most of the time, it would be considered an improper conveyance, and that you'd be fine. But that's not. Home things like home title lock aren't technically title insurance, um, so just be mindful. That's that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about title insurance from you would get that from a carrier like a Stewart title or like a Caddick title. Um, you have the right as a homeowner to choose whatever insurance provider you wish to use when you purchase the home. Um, a lot of people just use whatever their banking institution uses. It's just easier that way. A lot of times, you're not going to save money using one company or the other. They're all, they're all pretty competitive. So here on the Common Law, again, we're going to talk about some pretty common legal issues, things that you should be on the lookout for. Um, coming up uh, on the Common Law, uh, we're going to hopefully be talking about um, the ins and outs of real estate law. Uh, we'll have hopefully a realtor uh, come in and talk uh, about what you should be looking for when you're hiring a realtor, when you're hiring a real estate attorney. Uh, other issues, uh, we might, we're going to jump into the criminal law side of things. I'd like to thank you all for joining me today. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, I look forward to having these chats again with you in the future. I know the world of the law is very scary. And it gets very foggy, and we don't want to talk about it, and we just don't want to deal with it. But if we all work together, and we all keep a smile on our face, we'll all get through this, and it'll be great. Again, my name is Attorney Edward Berkman, uh, and this has been The Common Law. Tune in next time. Mm -hmm.